Hi and welcome to Lane Smash Season 5 Match 48 PTSD versus RSPC. The match itself should be happening and starting in the next 5 minutes. Uh, this is again one of the most common lanes this uh, weekend, especially the Lane 1 Haker Tech Plant to Tumor Tech Plant. Um, I'm your host Dodso. Um, hopefully today not bots all the robot, bo robot boys yesterday and joined Joining me today is Halo Spud. Hi, yeah. I'm from Hydra on Cobalt. We've played this lane quite a few times, actually. We, I remember losing a final of a previous lane smash on this, on this lane. It was a bit, yeah, bad memories. It was a tough game. It's, not, I think that it's not like a fully symmetrical one. I think there is a slight bias to it. Um. And there are some little tricks to the lane as well. I think we're going to see those in the opening here. So I don't know whether to spoil it or not. <laughs> so on this lane here, we have the home base Higger type plant and the seven home base Jimmy's type plant. In the middle, we have the good old Jimmy Rock Depot, which will be the neutral base. Both teams can capture that base. And as we've seen for the majority of this season, this normally gets capped within the last 10 seconds. Because people seem to have that mentality now where they will allow the other team to hold a point and then they will literally force their way onto point within the last 10 seconds. So hopefully we'll, we'll see something different perhaps, but I'm going to guarantee that we'll probably see the usual, you know, lane smash slash server smash opener with a big air battle and then we'll see who gets some point first. But basically on these neutral base lanes, the point doesn't matter. You, you don't even need to send a guy to flip it. Just, just to put some pressure on the other team, you might do that. But um, what you're fighting for for the first few minutes is control of spawn positions around the base. So if you can win the vehicles in air fight and lock the other team out from deploying a Sunderer, you've won that base. You've, you've capped it without contesting the point. So, so the point and infantry fight is less important, but then you've got that difficulty of when do you switch from vehicles to to putting bodies on the point to like prevent a, an airdrop and make sure it goes through. Um, and timing that wrong is how I lost. <laughs> timing it completely wrong by, well, I would say by about 30 seconds is how I lost the final on this lane. It's, it's a really tricky thing to call. The neutral base lanes uh, can be very harsh on a team. Just realized then that I need to go into full screen window in order for you guys to see on the stream. So I have um, rectified that. Obviously, this is the lane one Hayoka lane with the normal chimney rock uh, neutral base in the middle. Just now a quick look at the PTSD uh, side of life. We'll, we'll be playing NC and their home base being in the North Hayoka tech plant. Uh, they seem to be going for the usual. Oh, this is a lot of vehicles, and we've heard about this. Um, that PTSD have a system of pulling a lot of spare vehicles and having one person rotate through these vehicles to, in order to, like to save nanites and then essentially to jump in so they don't despawn. Quite a lot of uh, vanguards, quite a lot of reavers. Um, they are on the east, like not most people do, and they go for the yard and go east. So the point go for the light bridge. We head over to RSPC playing as TR in the south, and we see that they're pretty the much start. doing. Very similar here. They have a lot of ESFs, um, a few Sunderers, but this is going to be a very typical well, think, air ball fight first. Yeah, strategically they've gone, they've committed very heavily to the air, whereas uh, PTSD have gone for a more balanced setup. They've got tanks, they've got air as well. Um, but this this uh, RSPC setup is is very Four, heavy on mosquitoes. Three, two, one, go. Five. Four, three, two, one, start. We get to hear two um, all calls there by two referees. So, as we hear the TR are off, straight off there, heading all the way on to Jimmy Rock here. Uh, the Reavers coming in at height. Now, I'm expecting one of these mosquitoes to make a beeline for the um, bridge terminal. Uh, Aoka Chemical, but it looks like they're not doing that. We haven't seen a successful bridge hack. I saw 
Earlier in this season, someone did try to do it and they were maybe five seconds late on getting a, a prowler off of the bridge. But as we see here, Van Gast is behind to destroy the vehicle terminals to prevent um, TR from getting vehicle behind them. But even then, just hacking that bridge just prevents that reinforcements. Um, it slows them down getting into Chimney Rock, which means that you can uh, choose where you want the vehicle fight to take place. You can set up your your uh, prowlers wherever you want, although they don't appear to have a single prowler. They've really gone full air. A huge air fight going on above the base, like nearly at flight ceiling too, very high up. So TR are first on point here, only defended by Team Spitfire. Once Spitfire to defend that patch of point, TR very um, much still could try and contest the airspace here. NC Vanguard's already on the road on the west. And have they have some east? Yes, they do have east. We see the um, typical PTSD pincer maneuver here. They've done it so many times um, this season where they've had vehicles on the main road and a small squad of uh, MBTs heading to the east and coming round here to try and flank the bridge and we see them doing the same thing again and hopefully we should see the vehicles from the north pushing down the bridge and then exploiting that uh, pincer movement here and we do see some TR vehicles going down it does seem that TR are more focused on the air battle at the moment uh, well, but they still is... control the catcher point so this is interesting. I'm just watching the air battle and the TR are performing not, probably not as well as you'd expect. I think what they've done is just put everyone in ESFs and they're not all necessarily competent pilots. So to be honest, the NC are doing fine in this air battle. In fact, they're just mopping it up. Uh, let me guys know if my microphone is working the way it is intended. Uh, and that you can hear Halo Spud. Obviously, I have had problems yesterday um, with the whole bots or robot voice thing, but hopefully that is now rectified from yesterday's afternoon matches. You are better than this. So it Show seems me. that even though NC do have that vehicle superior here, uh, the capture point is undefended, and both teams are very reluctant to commit their forces to the A point. Because I've seen it this season, people seem to get wiped, and then the capture point gets taken in the last 10 seconds. So. Maybe we'll see NC come in the last few seconds, or maybe we'll see the TR come in the last few seconds to take it off the NC when they eventually bring these Thunderers up this pathway. The NC are in a strong position here at the moment. They're setting themselves up quite nicely for the last two minutes, but they haven't found the TR Thunderer and aren't looking hard enough for it. It seems that oh, these Vanguards are that. very complacent to these two anchored down prowlers in the Got distance. It. Big TR armor column coming down the road here. These vanguards are in a position to hold this bridge, but capture point with one minute left for TR. We do see some T NC infantry going to the point, going for that, going for that steal. Will Team Spitfire defend the point? The TR are coming in very late here. Spitfire goes They're down. They have to really wipe out the the vanguards very quickly if they want to get onto the point with any any bodies. We do see a few TR Sunderers there sacrifice themselves in a sea of vanguards. Maybe we'll see it. So on point now Failure with a couple of spawns of and a scat max. So TR Sunder here. Will we see a clown car? Will we see a matter point on this Sunder? Beacon goes up for a TR here. Um, in the last 35 seconds, it's going to be down to the wire. Who has this point? The capture point itself is not that well defended. There's only one engineer. The engineer goes down, one max remaining. And, and see, really need to squad spawn on those buses. They've got to get more bodies here, or they're going to lose it. They, they should have just got everybody onto point. But like, NC, no yeah. vehicles, no air, everyone on point as soon as they got those buses in. Those NC Sunners need to be destroyed because they're going to do the same what TR doing. They're going to just clown car it. They're going to spawn on the Sunners, get in. 20 seconds. Reavers coming in to try and sack Chaos them. around the point. Both factions are still there. There's, there's still squad spawns available for the NC. 10 seconds. They I just need more bodies in there though. They're, they're struggling. Are they flipping it? But it is chaos in the capture point room. And see, reflip it with under 10 seconds left. They're in a really good position. That's nice. That's a good cap. And the first point goes to PTSD. 
And as I've said previously, it's always comes down to these last 10 to 15 second fights here. Both teams very reluctant to commit until the last few seconds. But the copies yeah, of Vanguard are both allowed. of them left it a little bit late there. They could have been a bit more uh, confident with their vehicles. But TF still have a beacon up. They can allow the NC to leave this base temporarily and then push back in. NC still have quite a few ESS in the air here and they are already putting pressure onto Tumor Skylast Battery with the TR responding in kind with the Strikers as we've seen quite regularly the last few games a heavy use of Strikers for everyone who uses uh, plays as TI it seems and we see very aggressive defensive with the Strikers trying to push these ESS back but it makes it's, me wonder. it's a good call because to, to be honest if they want to retake Chimney Rock they're gonna need to clear the air um, they're gonna have a hard time in, in quite an open base. So we do um, see a few prowlers uh, very extended north way. We do see a, a vanguard. He has been, he has had the bridge hacked and he can't progress. Obviously infiltrator has gone there. He's gone behind enemy lines. He's pulled a prowler. He could have pulled a sunderer really. I don't know why he's going to do it with a, with a prowler. But he does get a beacon down which should allow his faction to get onto A point and potentially back cap. Reaver's already responding to that beacon. Got a nice little harasser fight here at uh, Tuma Skylands, actually. Fury harasser from the NC chasing down a uh, halberd harasser. It's doing really well. NC already uh, trying to get a Sunder in that northeast garage there. Two Sunders, in fact. Uh, Vanguard still trying to harass the TR armor and Sunders trying to vacate the area here. Did TR manage to drop from that beacon? Yes, they did. They do have the back cap. However, they do, but not in not in far. Not in greater numbers. The NC here um, needs to get a beacon up for his comrades. Yeah, it's a bit of a ghost cap for the TR there. And the last TR hard. goes down before coming into a beacon drop. I find your effort lacking. However, the, the TR are selling northwards here. They are heading towards the bridge. NC do have a beacon on the capture point here at Jimmy Skylance. Within three seconds, NC will have this back cap. Providing that he can get there. There are still a few TR at Jimmy Rock, but NC are flipping the point here. Oh, lovely suicide C4 harasser takes out a vanguard at Chimney Rock by the vehicle terminal. That was a good play. NC so still seeming strong in the air. They've got a galaxy flying over to uh, to the Skylands now, hovering above the point. Is anybody dropping out of that? Some. Oh, there's a Max. Failure is not the path of enlightenment. Going for it. They are not back capped at all. They can't be actually because they've got a little time. They still, have, they're still quite dominant in the air from the beginning actually, the uh, the Reavers have been not completely in control but doing pretty well in the air. TR managing to re-secure the facility here, however there are still a few NC about, uh, NC still controlling the upper levels with that beacon, Reavers coming into support, NC pushing through the doorways on the southernmost side here, Reavers harassing the TR, TR with money in kind with those strikers again. Have TR managed to get a back cap going? I don't think they have. The main road north to south is still being contested by both factions here. Big push by NC here. Coming down for the beacon. Max is on point. Max is trying to hold the southern doors here. Both factions holding half the building each. TR on the northwestern and uh, NC on the southeastern side of the building. Beacon's going down of T. T. I do have people in Chimney Rock. Right, here we go. So they got a beacon on point. They're just flipping the point at Chimney Rock. 
Um, it's a, a bit of a skeleton crew at the moment, but uh, they do have spawn options available. NC using a defensive beacon here to harass the small TR force here, but more TR are arriving, but same as NC, they are all coming to prevent this cap here. NC were really fast on that. Like, as soon as the point Enemy flipped, they, they had bodies um, getting getting straight back there. And a Fury harasser now shelling into the point room. Uh, it's going to be very tough for those TR guys. In fact, they're looking quite dead. Yeah, I think that's been mopped up. NC reflip. The TR Sunder has been found and destroyed by rocket pods. And this is really why they're going to have a hell of a hard time taking this base back if they don't have air control. The, the, their Sunderers are always going to be exposed to the air and visible, and so are their players as they run in. The TR are going to need mosquitoes. These strikers, however, are exacting a heavy toll on these Reavers, but at the same time they are also punishing the vehicles trying to get pulled here. These strikers trying to defend the vehicle bay, trying to help these Sunderers from getting out, but as soon as these Sunderers push anywhere north, they're not going to be in that safety net of those strikers. The Sunderers as well, I mean, I, I get their loadout, but Bulldog Cobalt is not going to help you one bit when you're trying to defend yourself against the SFs. And with these Sunderers now leaving the protection of the strikers, they run in to Vanguards on the bridge here, and harasses already... Yeah, they're going too heavily for the Cobalt, so overvaluing them. They they really need to put you know an AA gun onto those the back of those harassers. Just make it so you can drive the SFs away. You'll probably not kill them, but you'll keep them at a distance, and that'll keep the Sunderer alive a bit better. One TR guy running the Gauntlet here. He's running towards the A point. He managed to survive the um, the climatic chase here by these harassers. He does get to point, he does try to get a revive here, but I don't see a beacon. This would be the perfect time to get a beacon. The beacon does go up. NTR are on point. NT come to meet them. Harasser on the westernmost door here. A bit of a vehicle push now from both teams, really. Um, like halfway between Skylands and Chimney. Um, it's. I mean, the TR could have won that so easily, though, if they didn't string their first few vehicles out. Their first few vehicles just got murdered by harassers. Terran clown car comes to point. Gets taken out by NC. Oof. And this air uh, is brutal. However, they do have Sky Gazers here, and they are withdrawing under the onslaught of the Reavers. Trying to pull back, trying to bait these ESS into the safety of those Striker Nests. But the, uh, the Sky Guards have just been slaughtered by air to ground. I mean, Sky Guards are not that good, and they're quite expensive. And there are also still MBTs around, which will murder Sky Guards. Well, we are seeing a return of the TR Musketeers here over Chimney Rock, potentially supporting a push here. All it would take is one of these Musketeers just to land and drop a beacon as we saw in yesterday's games. We saw quite a heavy use of other teams using their Liberators, using their ESFs to quickly get a beacon down and then redeploying. So maybe we'll see that, maybe we won't. We do see an NC Galaxy enter the fray here around Chimney Rock. Musketeers already getting enticed and the, the Galaxy takes a few down. Yeah, big group of mozzies on it now. It's pretty. I can't see it surviving. However, it's a big distraction, and it is. It takes a long time to kill too. It, I mean, they we're missing a lot of rocket pods, but still. More TR Sunners heading across the bridge, down through the little choke points here. Hit the junction. Quite a lot of NC armor here at the Almond Tower Junction. Um, he, this TR Sunner is not in a good position here. <laughs> This is a thing you see quite a lot in, in lane smash and it's like um, overly tunnel vision sunderer driving. 
Like, if the MBTs aren't pushing, then the Sundras should never drive in front of them. But this is if the thing. If an MBT doesn't think it's safe to go there, then you you should just wait. The, if the, the TR could have run that goal and then, if it gets on going, but he decided to stop and try and bulldog a harasser, he could have definitely at least made it to maybe this tree before exploding, and he could have, like, got the infantry to put a big down or something, but as you see here... Yeah, I guess. And this is the, as you saw yesterday, um, when outfits or teams pull a lot of ESFs, they get stuck in that service match trap, as um, Dubnus yesterday coined it, uh, where people just get like trapped in these big cinematic air battles because they pull the ESFs and then... Sometimes. But you can't hold that up forever, though, just because of the nanite drain. This ranger on the back of the uh, NC bus is doing great work, though. I think he's killed two ESFs and he's driven the rest to at least an extra 50 metres further back. NCR on the point here at Chimus Gallant, where TR are already trying to deal with this back cap. They do manage to wipe. And we do see a TR armor column heading towards the bridge again. NC still holding the junction, it seems. This force here seems to be on the defensive to prevent any sort of TR. Thunder is coming down the lane to A. The Vanguard being uh, focused by air there, though, he's on fire. He's, yeah, Vanguard down, Sundra down. I think the uh, TR are actually going to get a spawn deployed this time. It's like, it's why are it's like the TR Sundra hesitant to run the gauntlet? These uh, harasser weapon choices are interesting. I, I'm pretty sure that sounded like a Fury again on the NC one. This TR Sunray could be flight. full of a score. We do see TR in the background on the point here. This Sunray coming to try and relieve the besieged TR here. Spotted a hostile engineer. Enemy engineer in the area. TR used the Sunray to deploy here to infiltrate, get out. NC must have a beacon in the in the cliffs, and they do. These mosquitoes need to come back here and help this defense. But we do see a few weavers trying to contest the airspace to keep those mosquitoes south of. Chimney Rock and see mop the up the Chimney Rock uh, defense again. But Quite nicely, actually. Run. There's some good LA play there. Facility. But TR do have a beacon, unfortunately, it is on the hard spawn side of the base here. And any okay. any sort of like cohesive like drop here on the beacon, we'll see them sandwiched between a rock and a hard place, between the A point and the spawn room. But it seems that both teams are using their own beacons to get onto a point rather than the actual spawn room. Well, yeah, it gets you straight there. But it they gives do you a safer run into the point, really. They do manage to get a beacon closer to the a point. However, it is in danger as this heavy uses the rocks to climb. And unfortunately, the flank it does go down, and the TR beacon is defended. Obviously, as the TR are on point, I'm guessing that NC do have the back cap here, and they do. Um, a squad of NC pushing the point now. TR trying to respond here. TR have got a blockade bus there too. I don't think there's anyone in it, but if they keep one guy in that on the gun, they can use that as a squad spot. It's got two uh, cobalts on the top, which are, are going to be quite useful. So they should really keep a guy in that, and because it's blockade as well, it's not going to get instigibbed by C4. Um, yeah, that's worth keeping someone in. When the air get close as well, the Cobalt is usable against them. It's it's not amazing, but it does work. The NC Beacon here at Chimus Cast is still up here. We do NC see pushing a hard now. We do see a back cap here. Big zoom yeah, on the camera. And see, are probably going to clear this pretty quickly. I, I just feel like the TR let their Sundra die too easily there. Enemy heavy spot. I don't... Failure is not the path of enlightenment. If I'll show you by RPC there, just throws his life away. TR yeah, using the beacon in the on the mountain itself and a beacon to the, the south of the point. ESF's coming to try and support this um, counter push up this hill. NC focusing that TR beacon. I 
I believe this is going to be the status quo for the rest of this game where both teams going back and forth between Jimmy Rock and Chima Skylands. Yeah, it's going to be really... You, you, you're going to get this until one of them takes control of this base and spawn camps the other. And they're only realistically going to get that by... Um, by, by timing a push to just after they've won a big vehicle or air fight so that the other team is resource starved. But NC still have the beacon here at Chima Skylands and it makes me wonder why they're not utilising this beacon. I stand corrected, we start to see the few NC coming in here on the beacon. Uh, not many, but yeah, it's but the, quite a small push to be honest. There is a sizable TR present still here though, and this guy is not well reinforced to hold the capture yeah, point. He, he dropped right into the middle of the room and just got crossfired down. That wasn't very clever. NC seem to have obtained some sort of air superiority here. Mod TR moving in too. Um, yeah, they, they get more bodies into point. A lot of striker fire. Going to be quite important to keep the ESFs away with that open roof. Although it's not, it's still not amazing for air to ground. There is, it's a slightly open roof, but there's a lot of obstacles. TR trying to use their beacon here to go onto the capture point at um, Chimney Rock, but they are getting harassed by ESFs here, which is preventing them from sniping the defenders on the A point itself. The NC beacon is down now, but there is still two guys that just dropped, and they're both alive. Uh, one of them is now. Now they're both dead. Back at chimney, yeah, NC have got a harasser in there. This time, a uh, uh, is that a Fury again? Yeah, it is. I'm not a great fan of that gun, but they must know something about it. We see another TR Sundra trying to run the gauntlet. The harassers are already on it, the ESFs are already taken apart. The Sundra does it go down. It seems like a big switch towards harassers here. I think we're starting to see resource starvation from the big MBT and ESF fights. So they're starting to go for the cheaper vehicles. and. We'll probably find that they perform pretty well. It seems a, a good Terrassa driver is worth his weight in gold in these matches. It seems that PTSD have quite a considerable amount of ESFs and vehicles, which makes me wonder how many infantry they actually have to formulate some sort of push onto Chima Skylands battery. They seem to be content now to be on the defensive, um, as they are one point ahead, whereas RSPC, um, on the other hand, seem more content to be the infantry striker defensive and we do see them throwing sunderers over and over again and beacon drops to try and get onto the catch point at um chimney rock but speaking of which they have uh, another sunderer deployed at chimney rock but speaking uh, which of which we do see tr pulling a massive air ball here trying to contest the chimney rock airspace um quite a lot of mosquitoes in fact so hopefully we'll see the few TR here using the beacon to deploy. Hopefully we'll see these NC here getting cut down in the open, allowing TR to get onto the point. But at the same time, with all these mosquitoes in the air, the NC can get the back cap as they get embroiled in that battle with the remaining NC air here. Yeah, that's a big air, Paul. You see a few good pilots there, names that I recognise, like French Life. It, this, this, looking at the way they've split themselves up on TeamSpeak, I think this is just a full repull from their air group. Um, yeah, big air battle going on now, going on at some range as well. Possibly favours the TR slightly. Don't know though, there's a little bit of rushing going on. Nice play from a, a Vortec uh, Reaver. Rushes in and gets a kill. That air ball and is dead. pushing the Reavers back to their home base and that allows the Prowls and Sunrise from TR to head up towards the Amatawa Junction here and there's not many NC defenders here. It seems that quite a lot of NC are trying to deal with the air ball here. Uh, there's only a few handful of NC defenders. Beacon goes up for TR and immediately goes down again. It seems to be a common curse. Every time I see Beacon up it goes straight down. Uh, but the TR are bringing a Sundra here. It's going to get ambushed by these light assaults. Yeah, the lightning lead in the way just died. Um, 
It does have two gunners. TR. It just ditched the guns though, which is a bad move. TR pushing. You can't leave that thing unprotected. TR repair under beacon goes up for the A point here at Chimney Rock. The point is being flipped. TR are on point in quite a small force, but NC are already pushing the eastern lane here. People get so tunnel visioned with the, the capture point. If they lose that Sundra, they're never going to see this cap through. And ditching the gunners just to flip the point was a waste. Because but without the Sundra, it's a waste of time anyway. They're not going to see it through. It does seem that the TR air ball was baited northwards towards the NC home base. And now the Reavers have wiped the air. And now they're coming back to help the NC push the A point. Yeah, a lot, lot of NC vehicles in this push as well. A lot of uh, Bulldog and Cobalt spam with that air. Um, going to be tough for the TR. They're not going to make life easy. Yeah, getting one down. Not we are entering easily. almost the last three minutes of this round. So if... The NC managed to flip this point for maybe 10 to 15 seconds. All hopes of RSPC capping this base goes out the window. RSPC need to put everything they have into this base. Need to get more mosquitoes, more sunners, and just keep putting the pressure on because if they lose this base for more than 10 seconds. I'm saying it's three minutes, four seconds on the, on the round timer and two minutes, 42 on the clock. So that only gives them maybe 10 to 12 second difference if they pull this off it would be incredible though it would be a pr pretty amazing they're going for it and that's the right thing to do Let's, uh, we do see, see tr sun is coming to try and relieve the pressure here and lightnings however nc are pouring on here Mad that sunder is getting so pasted from the air this is going to be a very long two minutes for tr if they want to see this through, their, their uh, medics are going to have to do an amazing job. They need to defend these Sunderers and they're already being harassed by light assaults. Those Sunderers and the beacons are their only lifeline. You they're still there though, they're doing okay. Shaman. There's a lot of dead guys that are going to need a beacon or something to get back in here, but... NC trying comes, to bring their own clown cars up here. Yeah, an NC harasser to a bulldog harasser. Now the splash range on that bulldog is going to be quite a pain. Yeah, they brought it down. NC getting wiped on the north uh, eastern side here. Half a squad getting wiped here. Quite a good show by TR here. However, they are losing ground. Vehicles are coming on. TR trying to contest this under it. They got to kill those vehicles. So they're going to make life so difficult. TR Particularly need. The Rasa, TR vehicles. need a beacon. The beacon goes up. The pressure needs to be on here. One they, minute they just 15. can't get out the doorways to do it though. This is this is a tough one. I think NC are going to get it. But this is the thing when you're playing these games, you don't really have an idea on the actual time left in the match, so you kind of play. But I'm seeing it as one minute 17 on the game time with one minute left on the cap as well. Um, NC just clearing it now. Yeah, still appear to be dropping, but they're not going to retake that. It's, you've got to get everybody on there if you want to retake that. Yep, last minute of this round. Minute last minute there, and it is um, hopeless now for RSPC to get this capture point. But yeah. well done indeed, because it was a great effort. We haven't given up, however. But this is now we need to realise we need to start saving Nanites for the next round. Yeah, one of the guys in chat says this game feels stuck, and I, I get what he means. When you get a closer game like this, where the neutral base just flips, and after that it's, it's just uh, impossible for a team to just get enough time on the clock. It can, yeah, it's immensely frustrating for the players. The last they, 15 there, seconds there are ways here. They can break it though, and it does happen. 10? Five, four, three, two, one. Very impressed by uh, PTSD there, taking that first round quite nicely. But great effort by RSPC then in the last um, couple of minutes there to try and get that last um, cap in, to try oh, and bring them to even. that was their best push by far. But then again, this game is only one nil to 
um, PTSD here and if um, PTSD managed to get, sorry, RSPT managed to get the neutral base the next round, that will bring them even. Um, and obviously if PTSD get the neutral base the next round, obviously that will bring them one point ahead. So as we wait um, for both factions to leave the continent and the admins to flip the continent, so Halo, so what's your predictions for the um, the next round? Do you, think, me now, re -enter the continent. do you think it's going to be the same sort of like start? Just make or? sure you've gone to the other continent and back. Well, now, I'd, I'd be a bit surprised. Your home base. Um, I I was a little surprised. Like when I saw all the RSPC air, I thought they'd be going for the um, bridge terminal at uh, Aoka Chemical. Uh, and they just didn't at all. They went purely for an air fight, and it's not the lane for that, really, um, because a good vehicle blob with rep buses can keep your air at bay if they have AA top guns, which you should probably always start with. Adam yeah, I, I don't think the... that was a great move. So he seems that people aren't feeling continent. We do see one of the summers getting nuked from orbit. But yeah, PTSD have grown so much through this competition. They they play quite nicely there. Their opening was was pretty good. Um, the timing of their switch to point was maybe not quite right, but only a little off. Is I think their opening was really good. I think it was better than the RSPC one, um, and they probably deserved that win. I think RSPC went heavily for the air and tried to get air control in the opening and didn't actually do it. They they outnumbered the NC in the air, uh, but didn't win the fight. Um, yeah, which surprised me a bit because they've got some good pilots in their team. Uh, although they might be a bit rusty. But yeah, a bit of a surprise for me. I thought RSPC might have taken this one a little more easily, but they're finding it a very tough game. So now we have RSPC starting on the north Hegatech plant lane um, and PTSD in the south at Tumas. Again, the same rules apply. The Ginny Rock is a neutral base and I don't think that the, as we saw the first round, we saw like during the setup phase, we saw that um, PTSD had all those like spare vehicles. Yeah. And I kind of think it helped him in the air, but not necessarily on the ground, essentially, because they always had that air dominance, I think. They got those free um, like, repos, you mean. And it seems to be like the TR had to, like, essentially stop what they were doing, pull an air ball just to wipe the air, but then at the same time taking, like, manpower off the ground. But it always seemed like the NC managed to bounce back from that TR air ball and then just reassert dominance more or less straight away. Um, so, so maybe... the the only continent we used to do that on pull spare vehicles was Esamir. We we'd get the gunners of MBTs to pull spare ones and uh, and keep them back, so that if anybody lost their MBT early on, they got a free one uh, to get straight into. Um, I I don't think it's particularly worth doing on a lane like this. It's it's of less value certainly. Because it kind of requires that you use that you transport a group of people in some other vehicle, like a Valkyrie, a Galaxy, a Sundera, and it um, takes at least like one one dedicated individual, that's one person less in your team to babysit those vehicles too. And you you don't want to keep that up for any length of time. Certainly, you don't want to be a player down, particularly when you've got a close game like this, especially. I mean, for me, it kind of makes sense in the first few like minutes. For example, say if you're like going a Reaver or a Mosquito and you crash on start, it kind of makes sense there and then. But like for the entire game, probably not. Um, what one of the real challenges with lane smash though is, as like a leader of a team, is trying to make sure that you extract maximum value from all your players. Um, so like. A, a, like switching people from vehicles or air when the air fight's over off, is sometimes necessary. Ditching resources is often necessary um, and, and throwing vehicles away because having somebody sit in a tank or sit somewhere doing nothing with nothing to fight just to keep the tank for a while 
is often not worth wasting the man. It depends on the timing. Very, very much depends on it. That's one of the more difficult calls to make is when do you drop your vehicles? When do you say to your air guys, you've got to switch to ground now so we can see this through because they're not, they've got nothing to fight. Um, because you lose nanites, but you gain more effectiveness in another area. Still waiting out to hear how long we have until the match that before I go into looking at what both uh, factions have. Obviously, we are on a three-minute delay, so I want to try and time it right, if you will. Three minutes. So second round are three minutes. And that is the call there. So that's three minutes. So I should have time now to go over to um, the northern side here. It's this time around. Will be RSPC as TR. And as we see here, they have, again, quite a lot of um, ESFs here. Not a lot of vehicles, it would appear again. They were quite heavy vehicle, um, sorry, quite heavy air the first round, not quite um, as heavy as RSPC. I, I don't so recall seeing a Prowler in the first round, though, but they do have one this time. So it seems that PTSD are very similar to the first round here, quite a heavy use of ground vehicles in the forms of vanguards supported by numerous um weavers but they don't seem to have pulled as many like spares if you will i, don't, I think the time between the rounds kind of negates that whole oh we're going to pull extra vehicles for the sake of it exactly yeah um but they do have a heavy use of uh, vanguards and we'll probably see the usual ptsd um pinter maneuver maybe we'll see this time around swimming going north down the bridge maybe we'll see some head um, right here and go down the eastern side of Jimmy Rock but with Tia only having one prowler the odds are definitely against him however they do have a few more prowlers but then again the numbers don't stack on the ground in terms of vehicles but ESFs alone can just be used to get a beacon on and obviously as we start to see the Mosquitoes or Reavers slowly dying and that obviously adds more infantry like manpower to Get the cap if, going. And last if game, if you look saw... closely at the vanguards, by the way, you'll see that they all have AA top guns. So, what they're doing is putting one person in each vanguard, and he can kill buses or fight tanks, but he can also fight off air and help with the air battle. Whereas the prowlers both have gunners and top guns. One's got a gatekeeper, one's got a halberd. Um, yeah, it's it's not a good idea. The top guns aren't as strong as they used to be. When you can pull another MBT and get the resources back, just have two MBTs and you can have each time or four instead of two with the same number of people. And then they can dual roll doing AA and AV. It's, yeah, I, I don't think that's the right move. They should certainly have AA top guns. So we are maybe... having lost the air battle in the first round too, because all the all the NC need to do now is try and keep the air battle low to ground. Like, don't go to flight ceiling. Keep it a bit lower. Force bring them down a bit, and uh, then the Ten. AA is going to support them quite strongly. Five, four, three, two, one. Second round starts. Second round starts. And that is the start of the second round here. Um... The NC in the south and TR in the north. They should again meet around on this junction. We do see Reavers are already heading to one side, quite, going quite low. The TR muscles, however, are quite high. Um, both uh, factions rising to meet one another. Um, again, staying quite conservative, staying between their respective sides of the battle here. Nobody has yet to drop. Oh, they do. I'm mistaken. RS, RSPC again are the first ones on the point as TR. NC going low on the Chimney Rock here. With the Mosquito still remaining quite high. Yeah, they bailed two ESFs to flip the point. They got an infill and I'm sure there was another guy, but I can't see him now. See, it seems the... around there. It seems that PTSC decided to focus down that vehicle terminal to prevent the TI infiltrator here from getting that uh, vehicle terminal and a potential Sunday, but that would have been pointless because NC do have the junction here with their vanguards. And if I look to my right, yep, yeah, as predicted, they have gone for that usual telegraphed uh, pincer maneuver 
but they have not yet exploited the push here. Are these AFK? No, they've gone swapped to anti-air here. The TR, uh, Prowler and Sony Repair heading along the uh, eastern edges of the rock itself. The Vanguard should switch to their main um, cannon here and push these Sunders and Prowlers. Looks like they're going to do it. I, I don't know why the the Prowlers were so late to get around there. They were kind of hanging back. Being a little overcautious, perhaps. Now they have to be cautious because mm -hmm. they're heavily outnumbered. NC trying to form a defensive line here from this corner to this corner across the chimney rock itself. We have TR on the point here with their beacon. However, they are being harassed by ESF and Vanguard on the flank. Coming up on the road, we've got Prowler versus Vanguard just at the by the mountain at Chimney Rock. Is the bank? Oh, both died, but that leaves the NC with a bunch of Vanguards and not many Prowlers from the TR. TR so I are dedicated. Trade works better for NC. And this is the thing with so many NC in these vanguards and in the air, it does take off the um, manpower to get TR off of the point here. Look at this vanguard shooting the, the point at Chimney Rock. So we'll this probably see ugly. we'll see probably see some of these vanguards uh, abandon their vehicles because they are outnumbering here the TR vehicles. They're doing a good job on the defensive, but like I said, it, it, the more vehicles you have, the less inventory that you have to push T out of the point and with. Still a minute 45 left though, and we've got a new push of, let's have a look. We've got a Lightning, a Prowler, and some Sunderers from the TR. The Prowler's died far too quickly though. Because the vehicles here are having a hard time pushing down this road, because of these vanguards, you'd think that TR would go, actually the road's pretty much out of bounds here. Let's pull ESF and support the actual cap. Well, at this point, they're in order to win the vehicle fight, they would have to pull too many people away from the capture point, so it's not worth it anymore. But it feels they like they need to go with medics and beacons, and it's going to be tough. Because the road is too dangerous for vehicles, so you think they'd pull yep. some ESF to take the pressure off the ground pounding that's happening here. But obviously, as they lose more and more vehicles, more ESF, that gives the TR, in retrospect, more infantry to contest the point here. And we do see NC focusing these beacons, the beacons do go down. They, they need to kill, so the TR need to kill these Sunderers pushing point really fast. And the longer they live, the, the, the more the TR they're going to murder, basically. We are just going to see the NC use these two Sunderers as clown cars and deploy the infantry in them, and then get the point in the last 10 seconds again, as we've seen multiple they've times this season. they strikers seeing. though, and they're not that great against Sunderers. As... And they're all stuck in this one slide. Yeah, because once these vehicles start shooting through these doorways, they always seem to get stuck in this little corner here, or maybe this corner, and they will eventually get second, NC have got to go for this. They're leading with a max. This is nice. They're probably going to get it. TR all stuck in one corner, though. There's still quite a lot of them. If they get Resnades out, they Ten could maybe grind here. through this. Resnades need to go out here. Need to oh, focus on three. Five seconds. Resonate's going again. TR might get this just by Resonate bodies on point. And TR get, and that brings both teams equal one point apiece here. That was a great hold by RSPC here, and very unfortunate last second push by PTSD. But they still have those thunders outside. They can still get in there. That that really was a case of PTSD leaving it just a little bit too late. So we were talking about earlier though, when do you time that switch from vehicle control of a wider area to now we're going to switch to capturing the point. Timing that is the, the tricky thing on, on lanes like this. And they just, yeah, they got that wrong. But I've seen it so many times this season where people have just been so unfortunate due to like timings where they've been maybe one mm -hmm. or two seconds off that back cap or getting that sunder, like say for example, if that sunder had come 10 seconds earlier, they could have like captured the point, you know, and... It's really, it's unforgiving and it's stuff that never happens on live. So it's outside of your experience unless you've been in close matches like this before. And, and to be honest, the really close games don't come up all the time. It seems that NC are dedicating themselves to using these vanguards 
Uh, it does seem that they are on the defense trying to hunt down maybe some TR presence here. Um, Let's see, we've got a deployed Sunderer. Um, not in the best place, frankly. And there aren't a lot of people spawning on it. But this is the thing, we'll see those Vanguards coming down here to contest this bridge. Sundra is unsupported, you think the Vanguards would have gone ahead? It's been shot by a Fury Flash. I don't think I've ever seen a Fury Flash killing a Sundra in a lane smash before. But I think these Vanguards are going to save like the Sundra, maybe just out of time, but the TR NC, sorry, do have another Sundra. All these TI infantry caught out in the open, if those Reavers come back, they are going to be in peril. However, another clown car is coming past the Animal Tower. NC Infiltrator hiding yeah, behind the point the here. Point, though. Um, there's an NC Infil nearby, but that's it. NC don't get the beacon up for the point, however. TR do have the back cap on Tumor Skylights Barry. That is why nice. the that is why the ESFs are over here. Obviously, these ESFs are already responding to the TI, trying to yeah, get the beacon down. But with an open roof, the hell out of it. with an open roof, it's it's going to be brutal for anyone holding this point. But NC they they bought twenty seconds, back. twenty seconds to wipe the NC armor here at this junction. That gives us a little lull, basically, where people are going to repull, and then we're going to get a larger set piece fight, probably vehicles, possibly air. Uh, RSPC continue to send these like rogue Sundras trying to sneak through the defences and the Vanguards are slowly trying to chase them down. Yeah, three, three Vanguards coming up. But... The Sundra goes into the garage, one of the most obvious places, and the Vanguard makes quick work to They need to not pull from Chimney Rock now because three Vanguards watching the terminal is... I mean, that Sundra is just toast. And it's one thing I've never like, noticed. Still like, still like, like, teams this season haven't, like... But like hacked a terminal like behind the lines, for example, and like pulled stunners, like for example. Well, a competent P team won't leave it there. Because it PT be destroyed. Because PTSD, for example, could go to uh, Hager Chemical, pull a stunner, come all the way around, and get like a stunner here or something. But obviously, like you said, people do destroy the terminals. Um, NC on the point terminals. here, Jimmy. Yeah, they're both destroyed on either side. I thought they would be. They they both well, yeah. I mean, RSPC have done this a lot before. They know what they're doing. And I think PTSD have grown a hell of a lot during this tournament. And they're, I say, uh, they're a very competent team now. I say it is every single game, but the longer one team waits to take uh, re-control of the capture point, the longer they'll have to wait for it to be re-secured in their favour. But we already see a TR Sundra pushing onto the A point with a few infantry in tow. The few remaining NCR gunned down in the corner. With a TR. Got a shield bus, which is the wrong tool for the job. TR managed but, to reflip yeah, the point. Yeah, a bulldog on there. It's, it's going to be good support. I find your effort lacking. Lot of dead NC in that capture room. They've cleared it nicely. Again, the air battle continues in the skies with the Mosquitoes and Reavers again staying at a distance. Both teams have a considerable amount of maybe half a squad worth of ESFs each. And ah, here we go. Yeah. So we've got a big set piece air battle. I, it's hard to tell. It's always difficult with, when you're looking at air fights to work out which team's got more. Because you can't see all of them in one glance. They're all just kind of spread out everywhere. See how using the even. That stunner is not going to last with the amount of ESFs and Vanguard coming. NC do have two beacons on the rock itself, so they can easily get back onto point here. Um, the question is. RTR having a back cap and they do have the population at Tumor Skylands however once they get that cap I'm sure the Reavers are going to withdraw but then that allows the TR Mosquitoes to push uh, south onto Chimney Rock to help defend. T watching the TR in this air battle is interesting. Like they're doing quite well but they don't all seem to be singing from the same hymn sheet. It's like some of them are just charging ahead and getting murdered. A couple of them have. TR did try to get the back cap there. Uh, I am not seeing a beacon for TR. That was a one man effort, it does, it does seem. It was a good I think actually, we're getting towards the end of the air fight now, and I think NC are going to take it. Yeah, there we go. It's like. No Prowlers, TR air left. Prowlers trying to contest the main road here. Vanguard's playing back towards the bridge.
those prowlers are about to get well they're about 30 seconds to a minute away from getting descended on by six to eight ESFs. Yeah, the ESFs are returning to Chimney Rock. NCI on the point, the Reavers are going to cut down all these TR in the open, but we do see CR responding with strikers again. Got two vanguards behind the prowlers now. They, they'd even... They'd... <laughs> They died too fast for the air to get them. NC, NC very light on the capture point here. However, they are buying time and all you have to do is keep putting that pressure on. More NC Sundered and Vanguards holding the bridge, allowing the Sundered train to come across this bridge unopposed. The two TR prowlers obviously have been destroyed. TR Sundered going on the eastern edge of the base. This Sunday train is coming. The well, it's here on point to, to Chimney Rock. There's a lot of pop in this hex. It's 50 50, the, the pop, roughly. TR in a position to ambush Big these fight. two Sundays, but. One Sundra is burning with the two of the Sundras bottlenecking. Sorry, three of the Sundras actually. It's a lot of Sundras they're bringing in, a lot of false multipliers. They're, they're getting uh, splattered a little bit by vanguards in the woods, though. This, this vanguard sneaking into the side of the base is poking away at Sunderers for a while now. And this is the thing, do you have strikers for the anti-air or decimators for the vehicles? You're going to have to like, choose one of them. More and more NC Sunderers are coming towards the A point, essentially building a wall of Sunderers. Um, we do see RSPC trying to snipe the beacons there, but with this amount of Sunderers... None of those Sunderers are rep though. Hiding a rep one at the back is always nice to keep them uh, regenerating. Because, I mean, all of them are damaged. Like, every one of them, even the ones at the back are smoking pretty heavily. You, you can barely see anything around the capture point just for smoking vehicles. You'd think uh, PTSD would also hack the bridge at Haker Chemicals to prevent the quick reinforcements of vehicles. And NC Air coming in here is really nice timing because look how open and spread the TR are across these paths and rocks and stuff. They're, they're really vulnerable to rocket pods. And this is the um, thing, the ESF does definitely divide their attention away from those Sunderers. We are seeing TR desperately throw themselves against these Sunderers. One is, another one is burning. They need a, another rocket pod run, like, yeah, there we go, perfect timing. But TR are doing a, a good job to here. gain ground. We see a defensive beacon going up, and what they can do with those beacons, they can essentially pepper pot their beacons ever so much forward. Big push by TR now on the front door. Rocket was particularly damaging the maxes there. NC Did a great not job for them. NC not a lot of NC on point itself. Only like two or three people. TR can definitely get in there. But they're getting so splatted outside the points. Just getting in the room is I mean just getting to the doorway is a nightmare for them. Getting inside it after that. With that build up there, that hesitancy there on that doorway, he's asking to get ESF. But so few of them are going to have shields. When you're getting nailed by splash damage like this, none of them are going to have shields. They're not going to be confident pushing into infantry 1v1s. NC throwing their vanguards in there to replace the Sunderers oh, just to try is, and keep momentum there. A great switch, really. really. Nice from the NC. Great switch there by PTSD. Seconds. There are so many dead TR. They're, they're, okay, they're beaconing in. Galaxy on the show as well with Bulldogs uh, trying to harass that little ridgeway. More and more NC vehicles join the fight here. But it was great to see that switch where the, oh, the, the Sunrise are going down, so the Vanguard just show up just to like shield. Um, this is what combined arms looks like in Planet Side. It's not pretty, but it works very well. That's, uh, that's a great use of outer ground and vehicles to just destroy infantry, to just um, not give them a hope. And PTSD managed to, to go ahead by one more point, bringing them to 2 1 at the moment. With the NC, with the air support and the Galaxy, they could definitely use this now rubber banding Galaxy um, <laughs> to get their guys in the Galaxy and do a Galaxy drop onto Heck of Chemical. Maybe we'll see it, maybe we won't, but surely the ESFs here are already on this facility, already harassing the spawn room. NC, sorry, TR pulling vehicles from the vehicle bay. Beacon for NC already up, and TR already, already scrambling to get onto the capture point to defend it. 
see how it's responding really well. NC already have Maxus here, so they must have some sort of AMS. And the they're really vicinity. going for this. So that was such a great cap, but they're, they're not less resting on their laurels this round. They're actually going for another base, which we didn't really see in the last one. Like you say, they, they made a few faltering pushes for Skylands, but nothing serious. It looks like they're going for Chemical Lab. It seems that Which NC... in my view is a tougher cap in a in a lane smash. NC did make a play for the capture point, but they are equal numbers here. Um, big big air for the Frenchies though. A lot of ESFs, whole lot of mosquitoes. And it's the thing they must have some sort of EMS. AMS, my mistake, to the north side. And we do see a few NC centers coming towards the foot bridges. Um, NC doing well to still control a beachhead on the yeah. TR side of this base, but TR this, this defending. Is, I, I don't like this from the French team. This is reactionary. So they, they lost that base, they think, because of air to ground, so they've pulled a massive air pull. Well, you're like, you're like three, four minutes too late. It's not going to do anything now. You grind out a few ESFs, but you're not going to win anything by killing them like right now. You, the timing's all wrong. It's just a waste of nanites. Just the temporary air clear when it's too late. NC Vanguard's prevented from crossing due to that bridge there. NC still holding the breach head here. However, do TR have the back cap? They do have the pop at Chimney Rock. Maybe they will get the back cap here. They do have NC on the point and they are flipping. Only two individuals, so it looks like TR managed to like redeploy to try and exploit potential beacon or a drop there, but obviously NC now can use this beacon and they're gonna literally just pile onto point and get set up and see. Mm, TR were actually flipping the point at Chimney Rock then. They had bodies on point and an air ball above it. Um they got a wraith flash in there. Uh but now yeah, they're back capped. <laughs> and yeah, NC have got the bridges. This is looking pretty good for NC, but the vehicles are about to die. The, the air ball will obliterate their vehicles. I, I can't see how they could survive. They do have those AA top guns, but the, it's just the volume of air. It's too much for that to be effective. Yeah, so the vanguards are down. The Sunderer is still up, I think. Uh, not for long, it's been found. So NC here, setting up on the double doors. They're going to need to beacon this and just get just get as much time on point as you can with infantry. Just, you know, slow them down. Attack is the best form of defense. They're not going to capture Chimney Rock when they've got uh, very time on point. Very interesting yeah. harasser here and a Spitfire on the big stairs here. TR vehicles trying to get an angle on the big stairs here. Two minutes 30 on the capture point. TR slowly trying to um, Bulldog get an entrance inside. here. You don't see that very often. It can be a bit tricky to, to wedge them through the doors. But yeah, Bulldog. Ooh, great explosion NC there, taking out there. a lot of NC medics there. However, it seems to me that the PTSD are medic balling. There's quite a lot of engineers and medics, not a lot of heavies. There's also, quite importantly actually, a Falcon Max. They haven't got an AI Max, they've got Falcon. So he's going to blast any vehicles around the doorways or any Maxes that try to come in. And yeah, it's a good call. And see, Maxes are not great not against infantry, us. but they Fight sure down. can take down other Maxes. Yeah, still to fall for them. It's really difficult to see through. How how long's left? Let's have a look. One minute thirty-five-ish. Still so many NC alive. They're getting their re revives off efficiently. So NC still holding the top of big stairs here and half the capture point room here. TR do make a push, but they do get wiped. Look, look how minutes. many TR are dead in that room, though, and yeah. none of those are going to get revived. Oh, no, just as I say, but, a lot, of N goes but a lot of NCR dying in return here. TR are touching the point, but 
Resonate because that frenzy there, they have this massive air ball here. This medic hiding behind the boxes in the middle of the room is doing a great job. He's really got TR back into that fight. Uh, TR, solo. Uh, TR pushing Resonate for TR and NC here. TR pushing big stairs from Dubs and managing to split the NC up here. Only the match remains. Res Resonate for both teams. Max yeah, goes TR, down. TR really starting to grind it out now. Tough fight still. NC may be recovering down here, maybe. Lots of resonates going off for both teams. It's chaos on the point. But I think there's just more bodies for TR. Yeah. That's a wipe. But again, it's a long three minutes of defending this point, which takes into consideration that there's only 7 minute 40 left on this game. So 2 minute 50 of that. That only gives them maybe five minutes to potentially take Chibney Rock. So they need to be really ready on that back cap and then put everything they have to even draw even. The closest, well, I, I think that helps though. It makes them more likely to do it. The closest they got to capping the base last round was right at the end. When they big push by NC. About defending, big really push coming from the bridges by NC. A very big push here with Maxes pushing Several. from their AMS. The AMS still hasn't been destroyed here. NC going through the silos here, trying to avoid the Sunders on the northernmost side they're, of the base. Running under this the is a lot of max. Fire, but it's not Banshee. They are running the clock. Will the Sunder reverse to run them over? They do much to get in. The Sunder misses by an inch. NC on the got point. some maxes in there again. Lysar goes in, takes a lot of infantry out. Got maxes, a lot of a C4 LA does a good job there. Engineers and medics are down. Yeah. Resonate goes out for NC. Yeah. The Maxes are still shooting away. Just picking off these uh, Frenchies. That was a great recovery there by PTSD. They have lost a Max though. This guy might get revived. He could be, but there's no medic anywhere near. They, they, they're risking losing a Max here. Quite a lot of infiltrators for a, a PTSD here. And yeah, they lost him. Didn't, didn't revive that max, that's not good. Big effing chat there for that fallen max. And this is the thing, 50 seconds and they will draw ahead by another point. Failure is not the path of enlightenment. That was a great timed counter attack there. Obviously that is the TR's folly for not persecuting the outlying AMS's. So server room is under big pressure, but the NC are holding it, they're getting their revives off. They are not yet pushing into that room, they're just peeking the doorways, working the angles. And to be honest, not grinding the NC down too effectively. They're taking a lot more casualties than NCR. Let's have a look at the other doorways. We've got like one guy using the tunnels. RSPC have managed to go through dubs. They now control Big Stead and using Big Stead now to push and snipe as many NC as they can, but NC are oh, yep. holding on the point. One second remaining. And, and uh, TR are going to get that back, I'm pretty sure. But again, they, Damn, can, that was close. they can do the <laughs> same thing again. They can get on that sunner, they can push in again like they did. That was a great push by um, It does not TR. get closer than that. They're it... so vulnerable to another big push now. With with that little time on the clock, the NC just need to flip it for a second. Those TR cannot leave this room. And that really weakens them a lot. I mean, we are entering the last 4 minute 40 of this round. And there's 3 minutes 30 seconds on the reset for the TR here, so... All they can do now essentially is defend, but it's still within the realm's possibility that PTSD can get one more point. I think RSPC's fate has they, been they sealed, just but. They've got to like fly over, beacon drop the roof, get everybody in there. We see here. Tw 24, 24 man infantry fight, that's what this is now. RSPC um, staying on the catcher point. No signs of where this next NC push comes. We do see a few TR Sunderers potentially going, but he does withdraw back to the They're not bridge. bothering? I mean, they've won the game, I guess, so it looks yeah. like the NC aren't bothering. But they've only had to like push on the point and maybe wait an extra minute. 
All that effort I, I, slowly I would dripping have gone away. For it. I would yeah. really wanted that last cap just to make yeah. it a better win. Because all that effort now is and going to waste. It would have been an awesome fight as well. Yeah, it makes me wonder what they're doing. Um, he had that the effort there, and as the as the timer slowly goes down, then. But they bought time, and that's the more important thing, and he managed well, to... Well, that, that's it. it. I mean, in Planet Side, more than anything else, attack is the best form of defense. If you get time on their clock, they can't do anything against you. It's like an absolute form of defense. So, yeah, they, they won the game from that little move, and, and it was a really nice hold. They, they really you. stuck to that point pretty pretty toughly. The TR had a hell of a hard Galaxy's time. Galaxy's coming. Big drop by Galaxy NC. A lot of infantry by NC bit coming late. in. Very yeah, late. Slow on that. But this is their Hail Mary, I guess. Um, but they run it in to a Cobalt Bulldog Bust and a Max. If they can get the point, they've still got like two and a half minutes to count, two and a half, three minutes. It was a very epic assault there by PTSD. However, they couldn't have landed in the wrong place. Quite murder. And NC absolutely wipes out at dubs. Absolutely destroyed there. They would have had a better chance coming There's from their Sunderer. There's a Sunderer parked across every doorway. They, they've blocked the doorways up with vehicles. Except small stairs. But they're trying to get one on that now. <laughs> and that is the importance of recon there and reconnaissance. They... It was a very epic thing to see, but unfortunately they got absolutely massacred and it does look like RSPC are having the last laugh here. Enemy NC trying to breach dubs here. Counter attack by the TR Maxes. I believe the NC beacons are down though, you tell me if I'm wrong. It seems that every single doorway there's just a pile of PTSD, however, great effort there. But to formulate that galaxy push, that did take time, and I do feel like they could have maybe done it better. Essentially, but that's hindsight. And from... yeah, well, to be honest, better is faster. They they gave the TR time to get those vehicles across every point, and then just bury the server room in bodies and maxes. If they, got there, if they got there much faster, they wouldn't have had the maxes or the vehicles to fight. Great game though. This was a good game. I'm so impressed with PTSD. I didn't think they'd win this and they won yeah. it in style. They played really well. Both they teams totally deserved it. Both teams played quite well and we saw it there like both teams I think it could have gone either way personally. Obviously as usual in lane smash, um, both teams are always like victims to circumstance and timing, that kind of thing. Uh, but obviously PTSD in the last um, few minutes again did some excellent pushes, but we do see a lot of Reavers coming in to enact some vengeance <laughs> the on the amount of strikers coming in. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Brutal. Absolutely brutal, but the TR are giving as much of their game in return. <laughs> Why not? Both factions here enacting strikers versus air hammers. Guys, it comes Ten. in. Finishing in style. Strikers versus air hammers. Who will win? I'm going Three, to go with Air two, Hammers. One. End of match. End of match. Congratulations for PTSD. And that is it. 2 to 1. 2 to 1. Representative, please join waiting for the interview channel for the post game interview. So, yeah, a very good game to watch. Um, quite a lot of back and forth there. Uh, very little turtling by both teams. Um, some really good pushes by both teams. Some quite good use of like combine down, especially in the second round. Um, both teams very, you know, um, focusing on the air battle. Um, obviously, I think the PTSD guys had the advantage there in the air and on the ground. But it does seem that PTSD um, were focused on the combined arms, where the RSPC guys were focused on like the infantry primarily. And it, it just seems that they were throwing like prowlers and sunders to try and run that goal of vanguard, that kind of thing. And I do feel like. Either way, both teams were victims of circumstance. I do feel that that could have gone either way. And that is the same for the previous, like, um, the to be fair game the other day, where I think if they played for maybe 10 more minutes, it could have had a different, you know. Maybe PTSD would have still won, but I think the game would have um, been very close to a draw. 
there, there was a really nice synchronicity to the um to the different uh groups in the ptsd force so so the the timing of when their air and vehicles came to support their infantry was just spot on like time and time again i mean you can do that by complete accident but every time they their pushes were just the, the like air came at the right time to to save things particularly that base cap it just turned up at the exact moment it was needed um and that's basically good leadership is making good calls you know a, a minute a minute 30 ahead of when they're needed um and yeah it, it won them the game so it's really I nice to see User was moved to your channel. User was moved to your channel. No wonder User your throat was, was dry. You're shouting channel. for the last like, hey guys. five minutes straight. Hey guys. Hey uh, so first of all, congratulations to PTSD and commiserations to um, RSPC. But to you guys, well done. That was an amazing game to watch. Um, some really good pushes by both teams. Some really, you know, down to the wire uh, captures there and defences. Um, so. How do you guys think it went? Like, did you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed watching it? Or definitely, I, I, my voice is almost done. <laughs> it was so intense. Fuck any, yeah, that was any awesome. moment. Any moment, there was some some stuff going wrong, and you always had to deal with new stuff. And oh, it was just too much information that you needed to focus on and filter out. It was really intense. So, um, starting off with. Um... RSPC. Um, so talk us through your composition then, because we did see you guys, I think from my perspective, focusing on the infantry side of life. Um, talk us about how your like team was made up of, like, were you primarily infantry kind of thing, or did you have like dedicated air, that kind of thing? Um, no, I, I think uh, infantry is effectively our strong point, but uh, you have to be strong in every domain of uh, combined arms in the uh, in rain smash so of course we are relying on uh, our infantry play but uh, without the logistic without the air control uh, even the better infantry can do shit so of course we're relying on uh, on it but uh, we have to to improve our air game and uh, vehicle game we still we we have very good players uh, on both but uh, so, because it kind of seemed that um, like your like response to the reavers were to pull strikers, and it did have that massive effect, and we did see quite a lot of like you know striking there, you know punishing the PTSD reavers and keeping them at bay. But at the same time, when uh, PTSD had all these sunders coming, um, it seemed to be like you had to choose between fighting the ESFs or destroying the sunderers, and. We did see a few times when you guys pulled uh, mosquitoes. You managed to push back those reavers. And do you feel that the um, you were like on the back foot for a lot of time, or do you feel like it was kind of equal across the board in terms of like your air against their air and your vehicles against their vehicles? Um, no, I think uh, PTSD was dominating um, on the major part of the match. Uh, that, uh, as the score shows it. Uh, they managed to to keep us on the on the back foot j just because they have a very good uh, timing uh, in attack. Just um, yeah, first you got the air is coming, then when the air is wiped, there is the sandies and then the, uh, the vanguard. So yeah, that's a very good. Uh, I'll say timings on attacks from PTSD that uh, managed to disorganize us. Was that planned, PTSD? It was one of the things we noticed during the match that you synchronized your, your your air would come in at just the right time when it was needed to to ground pound or to engage enemy air, and that, the same yeah, with vehicles. That, that synergy between like heads heads up to for for Ben like how he uh, let our air was uh, really nice. We had at. He said often to me in the comms that they were busy fighting air, but 30 seconds yeah. later, uh, I almost, I always got my air support that I wanted to have at the right timing. So we cannot call it coincidence, but I think we now are in a range where we actually can coordinate this amongst each other. 
and uh, that was really on point today. The Particularly RSPC that air recap. was a constant pressure on us. It was really hard to help uh, the the ground. Like, so many times, as uh, Senior said, I was having to say, "No, we can't do it. We're fighting. Shut up." So PTSD, talk us through your setup. Then um, we did see you guys um, using a lot of like pre-pulled vehicles in the first round. Um, like, how much of a benefit was that to you guys? Do you feel like that was like a worth thing to do, sacrificing that one individual to babysit those vehicles? Uh, no comment. <laughs> These are no, top but, secret uh, We do it for let's say we do it for a reason, and so far we have no reason to stop it. And so, how did your like composition look like? Because um, we did see in both rounds you kind of had like that, that very um, good mix of the amount of reavage you had and the amount of vanguards you had, and we saw those vanguards, you know, um, doing as I've seen in previous games of what you guys have played in, where you have a few vehicles on the road and you have a few vehicles going down the eastern side um, of Chimney Rock and having that pincer movement, and we did feel that um, the RSPC didn't have enough prowlers to really contend with your vanguards. Um, do you feel like your vanguards like made that much of an impact on the ground? Or yeah, um, air is one thing. Like uh, of course, it helps if you have no enemy air above you. It makes everything easier. You're not under constant threat at any given moment. But what really gives you the power to push points, uh, especially on chimney, is the cheese. Is the force multiplier on the ground, and our tankers have done really well. I think. That is one of the weaknesses our RSPC has shown us in this match today that we could abuse um, and and capitalize on. That their vehicle play was not as uh, strong as, for example, when we fought them on Frost, uh, Frostfall, uh, no, or was it not Emir lane on Esemir? Their, their vehicles were stronger on that lane and uh, now they were weaker, so we capitalized on that. Our Vanguards had um, most of the time control over the whole area on Chimney. But RSPC managed to circumvent that. Like they saw that they have no ch uh, no access from the ground, so they pressured us with good infantry play on Chimney Rock, which cost us in the second round the neutral base. Like we had our force multipliers around the point, and suddenly I hear in the comms that they are on point and it was 10 seconds left, and I was just flabbergasted how that happened. And um, yeah, so they had weaknesses which we tried to capitalize on. Work sometimes <laughs> and they managed to circumvent uh, those weaknesses and pushed us from a from an unexpected direction so that we had to improvise and yeah in the second round it failed us <laughs> that's just the the anti-dig uh, turtle on the point you know <laughs> <laughs> so rspc your opening strategy seemed to be like massively air focused what well, what was the the plan in the start of each round? Uh, no, that's not a secret that the air dominance is uh, very important. As uh, I think that you uh, brought the row, you say that uh, MBTs can do a lot uh, without air superiority. So yeah, the point was to to win that air superiority, which we failed. Uh, so that was. Or, uh, that was complicated for us after that point. Uh, we show we saw that in the first round, but uh, it, it, yeah, um, I so, think so... air superiority is a, is a big uh, is a big uh, subject in a uh, in lane smash. Yeah, it's huge. But the problem is, if you put just everybody into the air, um, half of them can't fly worth a damn <laughs> and don't contribute any value. Or, or that's why I found is a problem for some teams. I mean, not many teams have like 15 competent, decent pilots. Most of them, if they go for a heavy air opening, are putting some people in the air who are kind of cannon fodder and not a lot more. Do, do you think there was a, a that was a part of it? Um... We we had to do uh, something. I know. Uh, I knew we had to mm. do something a bit uh, exotic to win against PTSD. So we tried. We tried, and we we learn about it. Uh, so it's a GG for uh, PTSD on the on the B bracket tournament. They will they won they win it. Um, but uh, there are still matches to go on, and uh, we have to find uh, the solution. 
Yeah, it was a nice try, though. It was... Have we seen many other uh, like full air openings in the tournament? It is we've seen a lot of um, uh, we've seen a few games uh, recently where both factions um, essentially dedicated themselves to the air battle, and the A point at Jimmy Rock was essentially empty for a good five minutes before anybody even you know touched it. <laughs> um, but I think I'm going to try and wrap this stream up here. Um, so to both teams, again, well done. Amazing effort by both teams. Uh, great, great game. That was a great game to watch. I'm sure when you guys uh, re-watch the VOD back, you'll see how well you did. Um, a close one too. Yeah, really close. Yes. <laughs> very close. I think both guy, uh, both teams are very equally matched, and it was great to see that this type of game, uh, a lot of back and forth, a lot, of, a lot of like last seconds, like pushes, and there were a few moments where I'm thinking, oh, they're not going to get it. They're going to get wiped, and suddenly they get the capture point, and um, there's some definite like you know cliffhangers, and it's just. It was a great match to watch uh, from my perspective, and I hope um, you guys enjoy playing. Um, I wish you both um, good luck in your future matches. Uh, to the referees in the background, uh, just refereeing Halo Spud, thank you for joining me this afternoon, uh, co casting, and to the viewers for viewing. Um, Going to quickly announce the next two matches. So, the next two matches are both at 1800 UTC today. Um, the First one is TM versus WFAT on this lane, the Hika Tumas lane. And the second one at the same time is the Short Stack versus TMNT. And that will be on the lane 6 um, Zots to Mulak lane, which is on Hossid. So if you haven't seen enough of this lane this weekend, then stay tuned um, to watch the TM versus WFAT this afternoon. And if you want to fancy something different, then come join myself at 1800 UTC against Shorestack versus TMNT. Um, again, to both teams, thank you for really coming. I'm going to have to wrap it up here. Um, so, is there any more questions? GG RSPC, and thank you for testing. Yeah, yeah, GG to you guys. Streaming. You did very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to all our organization and uh, streamers, casters, uh, referees. But, uh, yeah, well played, PTSD. That was well deserved. And on that night, Thank you. Um, GG and good night.